Hi Stampin' Friends! Tonight we'll be using Prized Peony, and I like to call it Peony, but I'll try to say Peony. Um, this is a great new stamp set from Stampin' Up! And I've got several different ways of using it that I want to show you, and I won't even scratch the surface of how many ways that you can see it. Um, first I want to show you how I have put everything in you know, I always like to use these little um, stick-on magnets from Hobby Lobby. Well, this one needed more room to stick than just this. So what I did was I used the um, magnet from Hobby Lobby over here on this side and put only the ones that, that cut out the actual stamps from the set. So you can see we have the big flower and the big cutout, the medium flower and the medium cutout, and the small flower and the small cutout. And then there are two leaves and two leaf cutouts. And then I just, you know, it, it could go either place, but I just put this cute little edging over here and I didn't even use that tonight. So I hope that um, I will use it soon and show you all. It's, it's a very pretty little, it's got some kind of delicate loops in it, so it'll be really pretty. And then on the other sheet, I put every piece that we need to make the ones that are in the catalog that are so impressive that have the layered pieces of cardstock. And so what it has, each one, first of all, there's a center, of course. Um, typically those are yellow on um, a regular flower, but um, you can use any color that you want. And then we have like base leaves. So there are three base leaves, what I, I would call them. And then there are these accent pieces that cut a little bit to go on each one of those, kind of to make a shadow and some shading. And then there are three large pieces. So the largest piece is both the front of the peony and the back. Then you put the second piece in there, then this third smallest, and the tiniest goes in the middle. Or you can start the other way. Start with the smallest, put it in the, the next smallest, put it in the third smallest, and then in the biggest one. I don't know if that makes sense, but maybe once, once I show you, then it'll make more sense. Um, first, though, I'm going to show you just a simple monochromatic card. And I'm actually going to show it to you, and then we're going to put it together all the way. Um, this uses gray granite and some of the gray granite um, designer series paper that is in the um, paper pack. So what I've done is I stamped the large peony in gray granite. I have a gray granite card base and the back side of this pretty paper, I like how this, this looks so real. Um, it looks like an actual, the way they stand on the flowers, I have one in my yard. And then this on the back side is kind of both the basic gray, which is in the um, paper as well, but it's on the gray granite. So that makes a masculine look to me, which could be really pretty with a masculine card of some other kind. So if you find you have a little bit left, there's another use for it. So this is actually from the um, hippo dies, so, you know, the little cute little birthday ones. This is the die that goes with that. So um, I liked a little bit, you know, this directly on this paper, whoo, that's a little much. So that's why I wanted to have a back on this. And then this, of course, is just our little cute scalloped edged rectangle that I did the love and thanks to a dear friend. I don't know if you can see that. That is actually from the prized peony set. Um, this is lovely to put on here, I think, because it kind of um, adds a little bit to the, even though this is stitched and this is more hole punched, I think it makes kind of a nice look. All right, so to begin, I'm going to put my ribbon along the bottom. And this is also part of the same suite. Um, it's gray granite ribbon, and I think it is gorgeous. It's kind of a satiny, kind of a shiny ribbon. So let me find my glue dots. There they are. And I'm gonna to try to use my grid paper to get them lined up on there so I get my ribbon straight. Now 
Now I kind of prefer um, dimensionals almost always on this main layer, so I'm gonna put several dimensionals on here. And then just get it just where I want it. Just a little bit that way. Okay. And then I'm going to show you how I make a bow, which I know is really simple. I'm just taking it like I was gonna tie a shoe. I make a loop, wrap around, put it through the loop, pull it through, and then I just work on it for a while. So I like for my loops to be kind of small and you can either pull it flat or you can make the loops poofy, kind of up to you. And then once I get it somewhat like I like it, I just like to go ahead and cut off the edges. And unless I'm trying to be really fancy and dovetail the edges, I usually just go on the slant Okay, then I'm ready to put this on the card. Maybe right in the center there. Whoops, hopefully. There we go. Okay, so I think I want this raised up on dimensionals as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. And if you're interested in seeing how to put together um, the peony dies, or peony dies, um, don't give up because I do plan to do that next. Just want to show you this card because the stamp set is very pretty too and it has some great um, friendship and sympathy sentiments as well. So then I um, considered putting it like this, but I liked having the um, points going up and to the sides. So that was how I chose to do it. Just have it kind of like that. And then I decided I wanted it to be up on dimensionals there as well. And if you think that's going too far, then don't put yours on dimensionals. Oopsie. Then I'm just trying to get it somewhat even. And I need to probably, before I stick it down, I need to imagine where my 11 thanks to a dear friend is going to go, because I want it to be visible. And then I do want it kind of tucked in. So maybe kind of... Seems like, oops, up just a little bit. It's probably a good spot. And then under here, I just wanna put some sticky on this. There we go. And then tuck it back under and not stick it down until I get it just where I want it. And then maybe scooch it up just a little bit. And I may, you know, I'm trying to hurry so that I don't bore you all even more, but I'll probably have to uh, work on this a little later and get it a little more to my liking. So there we go. And this is the gray granite um, of the um, prized Peony Designer Series paper, the matching ribbon and the pretty stamp. Now I have cut these in a million colors because I wanted plenty of options when I was ready to make this card for you. Um, this one I've used our Purple Posy with the same gray granite designer series paper. And I used the soft sea foam for my leaves. And then I used the Purple Posy for the actual peony. Now, I think the way that we're supposed to, you know, according to the rules, um, that we're supposed to use these is like this so that it makes contrast between the lighter and then the dark edges or vice versa. But I also think it looks nice as soon as I find what it goes with to also just put them on here as well. I mean, just kind of make a little, I don't know how you describe that, but to just make it, um, I don't think that goes with that one. Let's see. Oh, it's this one. No, no, I don't know. It was much easier when they were put together like that. Let's see here. But in any case, um, I think that they look really good 
if they're just layered, let's see, can you see that? Just layered on in the same color even. So you can make your own decision on that. And then I'm gonna show you how to start out with this purple peony. So this is the center, because it's the smallest. And you slide it in to the next size. Then on the back, now I don't know if you can see this, you can line these up perfectly by just making sure that these edges line up. So you can see that this looks great here just because I have the others done. And you can kind of give these just a kind of a little bit of a roll out so that they look more like petals and so that there's plenty of um, know, texture, I guess you'd say, to it. Okay, let's see, I don't know if you can see that. So, to add texture. Okay, then I'm going to slide it on into this next one. And then on the back, I'm just evening it up like that. And that works very easily. Now, one thing you can do also, you can choose to um, put a glue dot or some mono multi with the green cap glue and go ahead and glue these down. Or what I think I'm gonna do, you can use dimensionals to put it together and that will add um, depth as you put it together. Okay, then I'm gonna slide this last one in. There we go. And you can see here, once again, I'm gonna go to the back and get these lined up. And so you see how fast that went for me. I mean, so simple. Now, the next thing you might wanna do would be to put some sponging on or um, go ahead and finish, like you know how I started fluffing these up. Go ahead and give it a little more. You see how easy that is. I'm just barely bending it and it's so simple to get it fluffed up and gives it a little more texture. And you don't wanna bend it too hard because the, the less, your um, bloom has wrinkles, probably the better. Okay, then I'm just going to imagine that right here in the middle of this one, and you could put it probably in several different places and it still look great, but to me, this is kind of the middle. I put my little yellow center as if it has really bloomed out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use some of my dimensionals See here. And I'm going to go ahead and take this stuff off both sides and then just slide it in. So I want to be sure that I've got each piece kind of puffed up, if that makes sense. And I'm going to check and make sure that I keep these um, bottom pieces tucked under as we want. So you could go with this from either way. You could go from the front or from the back, putting your dimensionals in. So that makes it pretty easy to use. If you don't get them just even, that just adds an extra layer of petals here. So you're not gonna really cause yourself a problem. That's just kind of to help you line it up. And I like this because it's very forgiving. You can put it on either side. And um, what I mean by that, you can put the dimensional on either the back or the front, and it seems like you can eventually get it stuck together. So that is super nice. See, like I didn't mean to stick that down just now. There we are. So then just kind of play with that, get it how you want it. So I do want to get some of my green glue or a glue dot. I guess the glue dot's easier. Okay, I'll use the glue dot. Okay. So then to finish my card, I just want to choose some pretty colors that I like. So I want to get each one of the leaves and then each one of the, I guess you'd call them leaf embellishments in a way. I did pear pizzazz, um, granny apple green, soft sea foam, and I also did um, old olive. Can you see there how easy that is to line up on there? So we can just put little bit of glue. Now watch, I'll get a lot of glue. Just right where we're gonna put the green. And you don't necessarily have to stick it down for permanent. 
you can kind of give it a little bit of play so that it looks a little more um, free flowing if you like. And then you can imagine just tucking these in behind and then finishing your card out pretty easily. And then um, I bet that this, I think anyway, I think this um, last year's ribbon that's still available would look really good with the purple, with the uh, purple posy. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside for a minute and I'm gonna to attempt to show you one more color. Now, this would be the color that you would use. Let me show you the paper real quick. This would be the color that you would use to, with the paper, most likely. Um, this is the petal pink, which is peach. And um, there are so many pretty papers in this. Um, this is a white outlined peony on petal pink. The back side is like a tile in the gray granite. And then this piece has a little bit of hatching in the background, and it is kind of the basic gray, the darker gray. And then this is a real light chevron in the um, gray granite. Next, we have this kind of petal pink, I would say a spatter almost. It's just a real um, soft pattern. And then the other side is a full open peony. Let me see, I can't, you can't see that. There we go. A full open peony in the gray granite. It's kind of almost like a shadowy kind of a look. Then we have this one that we're using with the hatch marks of, um, of the basic gray on the gray granite. And then the gray granite, um, very realistic looking peonies on white. And then this is petal pink peonies on white. And then this is the outline um, of peonies, kind of a stylistic, artistic kind of a look on gray granite. And then this is the darker basic gray, a very realistic, kind of a sketch looking print on the whisper white. And then it also has a marble. So the marble look is kind of interesting, I think. Okay, so that's the paper. But anyway, that's why I think that it's good to have this uh, particular um, color because yeah, you're gonna wanna do it to match the paper if you buy the paper, so. But I'm tr gonna try to show you now just how quick it is if you're like, you're, the idea of, oh my gosh, I couldn't possibly make more than one of those. But really, you really could because I wanna, I'm trying to show you how quickly it goes together. And you can see I just halfway put it in there and they're all lined up. So then I just slide this guy in, there we go. And then all I need to do at that point is just put in the um, little center and I'll be all set. So you can see there how it came together. I mean, that, what did that take me, 20 seconds? So really this isn't as overwhelming as it looked. And I know I personally was kind of upset with Stampin' Up! I was like, why didn't they make a video to show me how to do this? Like, well, maybe it's because it's really, really simple. So. That's kind of embarrassing, huh? Okay, now I'm going to attempt, we don't know how this is gonna turn out, but I'm going to try uh, two different ways at putting um, a little bit of edging on a white peony. Now, I find the ones in my yard, they're a very light pink, but they have a lot of dark pink in them, actually. Like, as if that's where the, um, color comes from almost, like, it, like it's been drugged through with a little bit of, um, of a red. So, well not really red, hot pink. So I'm gonna try that two different ways on here. I'm gonna try with a regular sponge, and then I'm also going to try with a sponge dauber and see if I can control one better than the other or if I get one softer than another and make it a prettier look. Um, also, my peonies do have a magenta madness center. Um, I, they don't all, but mine do, so um, that's what I'm gonna use. Okay, so now when I start with this, I always get quite a bit on my sponge dauber or my sponge, and then just kind of go like this. And that makes it where there's not such a big glob on the edges. So then you can see I've done that, and then I just have kind of a light color here. I hope that makes sense. So I'm gonna try that first. I'm just gonna go along the edges of this white, just adding a little bit of color, just as much as I think I should. Not, I don't wanna to go too far in, because I do want it to remain white. Because I think it would look pretty on a, um, mar on a 
magenta madness background with kind of the pop of white. So you can see there that just kind of adds. And then I want to um, fold it like this, maybe put my hand, possibly um, a, maybe a uh, tool of some sort to hold this because I want to put some on this piece as well because this is um, a petal edge. Now, you could do this tone on tone as well and it would be beautiful. Um, I just think it adds a little bit to um, do a contrasting color like this. All right, I think that is tolerably enough for right now on that. And then I'll try this one. Doing pretty much the same thing. This will also help me understand, and, and you if you're um, going to buy this set, um, exactly what I'm seeing when I um, tuck the pieces in. I think that'll make it more clear once I've gone over this with the sponge dauber. So now that I've done that, I believe I've done one of every piece, very important. I'm gonna go ahead and put the center piece in here. When I line these up at the bottom, it looks like I need some pink on this piece right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this back out. I need pink on this piece as well. So, just gonna go ahead and try to smudge that in there. Now, this would also look great, and I'll probably try it when I'm finished, with some um, Wink of Stella over the top of all this white. I think how pretty that would be for a um, wedding card or such. I think that would be really cool. Okay, I'll tuck this back down in there and then tuck it down in here. And let's tuck in our center here. There we are. So what do you think about that? I hope you all like it. Um, I think it adds kind of a an extra dimension when the white has just a little bit of pink in it. And it actually looks more like my pink peonies than any of the other colors of pink that we have. So I think it would look really gorgeous with maybe a background of um, some kind of pattern in the um, magenta madness or um, maybe with some green. What I was imagining doing on this was using these light green pieces, but instead of using a, like a more subtle um, color of uh, edging using the bright, really obvious bit of Granny Apple Green. So, I don't know. If you, you know, it's kind of a, one of those things everybody has different tastes about stuff like that, but I think that's kind of pretty. There we go. Kind of like that. Yeah, I think that'll be really pretty when I put it together. And thanks for watching and have a great weekend. Bye-bye. <laughs>